You might be thinking, and rightly so, that we just did a book haul. And listen, I don't want to talk about it. Guys, my last book haul went up maybe not even two weeks ago, like it just went up. But in the time between posting it, I got sent a few book parcels down here. I also went book thrifting, so I found a couple of books there. And then my mum gave me a few of her old books. So I've unintentionally, and it was innocently done, I've accumulated some books. And bearing in mind, I think the one I did two weeks ago was the first book haul I've done since January, late December. It was like my first book haul of the year, I think. And now we're doing two within two weeks. I've accumulated books and I'm excited about them. And we're just, we're just gonna jump right on into it. The first book that we have here, guys, I'm excited because this was sent to me by Penguin. <laughs> And that is so cool. This is from Michael Joseph, which is a like division of Penguin. They very kindly reached out to me and asked if I wanted a copy of a book that I will look it up in a second, but I think it's coming out in September, I want to say. And I was like, yeah, obviously I want a copy. Send it on over. And they have and I'm very excited. So let's open it together. It says, I don't know if you can see this, there's a little pull tab. But I've never opened a book like this, but it says this is how you open it. Yeah, I'm not sure I did that right. Oh wait, oh, oh. I'm so excited. Oh, she's thick. This is Then Things Went Dark by B. Fitzgerald. Oh, it's so floppy. That is the floppiest paper bag. So it follows six people and they land on a desert island ready to make their debut in a reality show. It says three weeks and 18 episodes later, five of the six contestants are in a police station because 12 million people were watching when Reese Sutton died on camera. Why does that name sound familiar to me? Oh my gosh, yeah. I, sorry, I used to know someone called Reese Sutton. Um, that's neither here nor there. It says the best friend of the... I'm so sorry if you can hear that. My house does this thing sometimes where the pipes will just, we call it singing. They just, can you hear that? They just make noises. Um, it says the best friend, the rival, the girlfriend, the lover, and the sworn enemy are left standing. So it's a thriller set on an island during a reality TV show. That sounds so cool. Let me just double check when this comes out. According to Goodreads, this comes out on the 27th of August, 2024. Oh wait, it literally says on the side of the book. Oh wait, that says the 5th of September, 2024. The side of the book says the 5th of September. So I'm gonna go with that. It comes out on the 5th of September, 2024, probably. I'm so excited for this. Thank you so, so much to Yasmin for sending me this. Okay, the next parcel. Ooh. Oh, these pipes, man. The next. Normally just bashing on the wall helps, but it did not. I literally cut the recording and then it immediately stopped. The next parcel I have actually already opened because a friend sent me this. It's not from Amazon, it's just an Amazon box. My friend sent me this and there are a couple other bits I need to get out of it. So I have already looked in it, but I haven't looked at the books properly. But basically my friend is moving back to America. Basically she didn't want to move all of her stuff overseas because that's expensive so she sent me a few books that she thought I might like so we can go through them together the first one in here is a book called Out There by Kate Folk from what I know about this it's a collection of short stories <laughs> I clearly know nothing else about it so it follows a woman using a dating app to find a partner despite the threat posed by blots which are artificial men stealing data Oh wait, that's one of the stories. Okay, I'm not gonna read all of them, but basically, from what I know about this, it's short stories and the kind of like connection is technology. So I'm guessing it's gonna be maybe kind of like a Black Mirror-esque sort of thing. I've not heard anyone talk about it other than her, but she said it was, I think she said it was weird. I don't know if she meant weird good or weird bad, but I like weird stories. But I think that sounds good and it's very short. It's only 240 pages which is perfect. So excited for that. Then she sent me Writers and Lovers by Lily King, which is a cutesy little romance, but I think it's about an author and 
I love books about authors. Yeah, it says the novel she's been writing for six years isn't going anywhere. Immediately love it. Um, then she meets Silas. Oh wait, she meets Silas, but then a few weeks later she meets Oscar. Oh, it's a love triangle. I don't know if I've ever read a book about a love triangle, you know. It says torn between two very different relationships. She's still got to write that book. That sounds so fun. I don't think I've ever read a proper like love triangle trope where there's like actually two guys in the book. And then lastly in that box we have The Tattooist of Auschwitz by Heather Morris. So it's set in 1942 and it follows a man whose job is to tattoo prisoners marked for survival. And waiting in line to be tattooed is a young girl. He was determined not only to survive himself but to ensure this woman did too. Um, I believe this is like a love story, but I assume it's going to be like a very, very sad one. And oh, and it's based on a true story. Yeah, I, I think this is going to be gorgeous. My mum read this a few months back and she said it was gorgeous. Then moving on to a few books that I actually got myself. The next book I actually got for free. I was in a coffee shop the other day and they just had a bunch of books on the table and they were like, just, just take one. They said, you can donate if you want to. So I'm actually going to go back at the weekend and take, I've got like a bunch of books that I unhauled recently that need a home. So I'm going to go take a bunch of that. And I saw this book sitting on the table and I was like, well, that's coming home with me. And that is, I want to die, but I want to eat taboki. I think it's nonfiction, which I don't really read a lot of nonfiction, but the cover is just gorgeous. And this is, it says it's part memoir, part self-help, and it's conversations with her psychiatrist. I think it's just like, written down conversations that this woman has genuinely had with her psychiatrist. I just thought I've never read anything like this. It's such a brilliant concept and the cover, the cover is just absolutely stunning. So yeah, I'm really, really, I was so excited when I spotted that on the table. I was like, I have to get that. So I got a coffee and a book. What more could you want? Then I got my hands on Stand Up Guy by Nina Kay. I spotted this in the works and it is a romance set at the Edinburgh Festival, which just sounds amazing. I love the Edinburgh Festival. I love it so, so much. The vibes at the Edinburgh Festival are immaculate. If you don't know what it is, it's a theatre festival. It's like stand up comedy, theatre, any kind of like performance, basically like live performance. So a romance book set at the Edinburgh Festival, literally what more could I ask for? It follows Leah and she bumps into Shep, a comedian at the Edinburgh Festival in need of accommodation, which by the way, trying to find accommodation at the Edinburgh Festival is a challenge. So I feel this guy's pain. So he becomes her lodger and I'm guessing, guessing a little romance ensues. I just think it sounds so fun. The cover is so cute. And I've never read a book set at the Edinburgh Festival. I just think that's such a cool concept. I then bought a book that I have never heard of. I've never heard anybody talk about this, but the cover and the title just drew me in. I found it in a charity shop for one pound. And I was like, I need to know what this is about. And that is, So You've Been Publicly Shamed by John Ronson. From what I can gather from the blurb, John Ronson is a journalist. It doesn't say that I might have, I may have made that up. I think he's a journalist and he basically is interviewing either celebrities or like public figures who have been cancelled for whatever reason. So I don't know who he has spoken to or like what the the different like topics are. And another, this is the second non-fiction, who am I? Reading non-fiction. It sounds so different from everything that I normally read but I just thought it could be really really cool. And it also said there's a bonus chapter because I think he then got cancelled? It says now including a new chapter about the author's own experience of being publicly shamed and it says it's honest, moving and a very funny book about modern life. I don't know, let me know if anyone's read this because as I say no idea what to expect but I just thought it would be a really nice way to like mix up my normal writing. Reading. What am I doing? I'm reading books. Okay, the next two my gorgeous mother actually bought me because I tore the house apart looking for these two books. They're both books that I studied in school and I was convinced that I had copies. I definitely had copies at one time or another. I might have got rid of them because when I read both of these books, I read them for A levels at school. I didn't really vibe with them that well but only because I did not like reading. I so actively was not a reader. Half of the books that I wrote about in my English A-level paper, I don't know if I should admit this on the internet. 
I think it's fine. Half the books I wrote about in my English A-level paper, I hadn't read. I remember distinctly quoting Fahrenheit 451 in my A-level English paper, that I did pass, by the way. I haven't read that book. I've not even read... <laughs> I've not even read the first chapter of that book. I would like to read it though. That I should also get a copy of at some point, but I didn't think of that one. I was thinking of these two books because I just think if I reread them now, I would love them. So the first one is Swimming Home by Deborah Levy. And I didn't like reading at the time, but I was thinking about this book the other day and I was like, that sounds so up my alley now. And I barely even remember what it was about. So it follows Joe who arrives with his family at a villa and he finds a body in the swimming pool, but the girl is very much alive. She is Kitty Finch. It says, why is she there? What does she want from us all? Why does Joe's enigmatic wife allow her to remain? I just think it's gonna be one of those like, I mean, I've already read it, I just can't remember it that well. I remember the ending. As I say, when I first read it, I, I just don't think I appreciated it because I was so against reading. I was like, I don't read. <laughs> Look at me now. Honestly, I kind of hope, not that they would, why would they be watching? But I hope that my English A-level teachers are watching this because they spent, bless their little hearts, so much time and effort trying to get me into reading. And I was such a like annoying kid. I was like, I know I can't read. I don't like reading. I think back then I was an undiagnosed dyslexic. I was an undiagnosed ADHD. I just didn't, I didn't vibe with reading. And now I literally have a YouTube channel dedicated to it. So the tables have turned. But the point being is I think I'm now going to love this. It's so short. It is only 157 pages. This next book, <laughs> this is embarrassing to admit. I regularly quote this as my favorite book. <laughs> and yet I've only read it once. And when I read it, I didn't particularly enjoy it. <laughs> But I, I regularly quote it as one of my favourite books because of what, it's a, it, I'll just show you what it is. It, it's 1984 by George Orwell. Uh, firstly, this edition is gorgeous. So much prettier than the edition I used to have. When I first read this, I, again, didn't like reading, undiagnosed dyslexic, all of that fun jazz I've just said. I didn't like reading. But this book has stuck with me in a way that no other book has. And it also made me fall in love with dystopia literature to the point where, when I started writing, when I studied screenwriting at uni and stuff, when I started writing, everything I wrote was in the dystopia genre. My dissertation equivalent, so like my big final year project at university, was a dystopian series that I truly believe I never would have written had I not read this book. And so I regularly say this is one of the books that changed my life, this is one of the books that I consider like one of the best books I've ever read, and yet I've only read it once, and I, I didn't particularly enjoy it. <laughs> But I think about this book all the time and I truly, truly believe that I would love it now. 1984, George Orwell. I'm so excited to reread it. Final stack of books are books that my mum has finished and she has donated to me. They are, of course, all thrillers because it is my mother and all she reads are thrillers. First up we have, I'm so excited, The House Made by Frida McFadden. She finished this, I think, within two days. I mean, my mum is such a quick reader anyway. By the way, I'm so jealous because my mum reads probably about 100 pages an hour. She reads so quickly. And my dad is dyslexic and doesn't read. Guess whose genetics I inherited? But it's okay. I still love you, dad. This is a thriller following Housemaid. I don't know a whole lot about it. I kind of don't want to know. I do feel like I'm the last person on the planet to read it, but my mum flew through this and she said she loved it so much. She said it was such like quick writing, short chapters, just bingeable, which is what I've heard from everybody else as well. And I have never read a Freedom McFadden book. Isn't that horrible? So I feel like we need to rectify it. And I feel like this is gonna be a good one to start with because I know this is a lot of people's favorites. Then we have a book that I have actually already read. I listened to the audio book, uh, but then my mum ended up buying the physical copy. So we've both now read it, but she just said I could have it if I wanted. And if nothing else, I'll need it for my end of year wrap up. And that is The Curfew by T.M. Logan. It's following a boy who stays up past his curfew and then a girl goes missing. And it's kind of like a, how far will the parents go to protect the children kind of a vibe. And finally, we have The Sanctuary by Andrew Hunter Murray. I don't have a clue what this is about. So it's set on a remote island owned by a wealthy philan phil philanthropist. 
who is building a brand new world on the ruins of an old one. So Ben comes to the island and he brings his fiance, Kara, but when he arrives, he is rapidly seduced by a vision of a better life. Before long, he decides to stay, but the island holds dark secrets. I don't even know if my mum's read this. No, she must have. She wouldn't have given it to me if she hadn't. She did not tell me a singular thought on what she thought of this, but hopefully she liked it. I vaguely remember seeing it on her Goodreads and I think it had a good rating. Again, haven't heard anyone talk about this, but there's something about a, oh, Richard Osman's blurbed it. I feel like I trust Richard Osman more than most people in this world. He just seems like a trustworthy bloke. You know what I mean? In Richard Osman we trust, I'm, I'm gonna pick this up. And on his head be it. Jokes, love that guy though. Right, done. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve new books on the TBR. Uh, as I say, I very much have not intended to do another book haul uh, this soon, and there won't be another one for quite a long time because I am desperately trying to get my TBR down. But I will say I'm doing a very, very good job. But if people offer to send you books, it would literally be rude to say no. Right? Anyway. Thank you very, very much for watching. Stick around if you want to see more. I would love to have you. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next one. Love you lots. Bye.